Hey everyone, and welcome to Wit Code, where in this video I'm going to be talking about throwing an error versus returning an error in JavaScript. So when looking at other people's code, it isn't uncommon to see a combination of returning errors and throwing errors. However, these two are not the same. Let me demonstrate this real quick. If we throw an error, the thread running our program stops working. So I'm going to just, just demonstrate this. I'm going to make a function called error function, and within it, all I'm going to do is throw a new error and just say there was an error. Very descriptive message. And then I'm just going to call it here, and then I'm going to log that was a strange error like this. Now let's see if I run this, you can see we get the exception there was an error. So notice how this log message here was never reached. But now if we return the error instead, so say I replace this throw with return, if I can spell it right, like this, you can see we do get that was a strange error. But so notice how not only was the error not logged to the console, but we also reached this console.log here. So notice how not only the log message was printed here, but the error is also not logged to the console like it was when we threw the error. So if you, once again, we did, th um, not through, but throw, you can see we get this, there was an error printed out, and the program stops, we don't reach this line here, but if we do return, it reaches this console log here, and this error is also not printed to the console. So you can already see some differences. However, there are there is a similarity in that throwing an error is like returning error an error in the fact that throwing an exception immediately hands control back to the caller function. So if we added code after the throw statement, it would never be called, just like if we were returning the error. So you can see on here we say, say we just log how are you, like this, this code here would never actually be reached because of the return statement. Same with if we did throw. So say we replace this with throw, this, log, this code here would never be reached because returning an error and throwing an error immediately hands control back to the caller function. However, even though throwing an error handles control back to the caller function, it does this a little differently than return. This is because if no catch block exists among caller functions, the program will terminate. And you clearly saw this when we called our error function. The rest of the program is not executed because there was no catch statement. So we don't get this printed out because the, basically the program halts here. And this is how throw and catch work. Think of it literally like a game of throw and catch. But so let's throw, let, or let's add a catch statement to our error function and see what happens now. So I'm going to get rid of this because we know we're not going to be able to reach that. But let's within here do try. Take this, put it inside here, and add catch to error. And let's log the error. Now let's run. And so notice now the program continued and our log statement at the end was printed this time. So we got that was a strange error printed. And also notice how the error is not printed automatically to the console unless we specify so. So if I got rid of this, it wouldn't even be printed. So I would just have to manually write it here. Whereas remember when we weren't doing this and I just ran this function like this, we would automatically get printed out there was an error and in red and everything like that. But let's go back to this and then we just log it out. And we also of course don't have to even log the error. We could just say an error occurred like that and just type out an error occurred. But now once again, let's change this. So let's change this to return instead of throw. And uh, let's get rid of this and let's put the error in here. And we run this you can see that this catch statement here was never actually reached. So if we wanted to see the error now, we would have to log it in the try statement because it's just returning it from this function. So we would essentially just have to do console.log and then wrap our error function like this and then we could log it because it's returned, the error isn't thrown. Because if it's thrown, it's caught in this catch statement. So the way you can summarize this is return just finishes the execution of a function, while when a function throws an exception, the program will look for a way to handle the exception. But if there isn't a catch statement, because that's the way it does handle the exception, the throw will log to the console and then prevent our program from continuing execution. And now the next thing I want you to take note of 
is that the thrown error looks for the closest catch statement. So it doesn't have to be one directly, um, not directly surrounding it. And the way to, this will make more sense when I show you it. What let me do here is I'm gonna create another function called nested error function like this. And this is all it's gonna do is throw an error, error object saying there was an error like this. And this function here is gonna call this function. Oh, not thrown, but throw. So you can see one here, and then we're not gonna log this, we're just gonna do error function. So essentially, we're gonna call this, which will then call this, which throws an error. And you can see already from when I restarted this program is that we get logged out this error here. So even though it was not directly within here, like we didn't have a, you know, a try catch, here for this, instead what it did is it just went out of this function, kept propagating upwards until it got to where we where the closest catch is essentially. So now if I do this instead, say I just log, I don't know, cheese or something like this, all we get logged out is cheese because what it'll do is it'll look for the nearest catch statement. So even if we have a nested function that causes an error, it will move up our call stack to the nearest catch statement. So just to demonstrate this again, it was caught here, but if we get rid of this, um, get rid of this as well, instead we just get the error logged here. So because it went up through here, there was no catch statement, so it went to the next call, and which was just from this main program here, and logged it out here. And now let me just um, delete all this real quick just to clean this up. So what I wanted to talk about now is throw versus return of an error inside a promise chain. You will see that it is essentially the same as what we were just showing, but um, let me show you that real quick. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to create a promise object. So I'm going to call it my promise, like this, set it equal to a new promise, and then of course we have our resolve function and also our reject function. I'm going to use some arrow syntax. And uh, within here, what we were going to do is we were just going to resolve the promise. So we're going to say it is successful. So we'll say the promise was successful, like this. And then if you don't know a lot about promises, just real quick, essentially it's just something that will take a little bit of extra time to complete. So it's going to go in, it's going to do all this in here. And if it's successful, what it will do is it'll call the function then on what we set it to. So if resolve is called, it'll call then. And, and on the other hand, if reject was called here, so that means something went wrong like this, then what would be called instead would be dot catch. So essentially these two are functions that we pass in. Then this function you pass this, and if it resolves, it calls then. If it rejects, it calls catch. So I'm kind of assuming that you know a bit about promises already, but that's just a little bit of um, background. But let me log this out. And also what we can pass in here is data and error. Of course, these two can be whatever you want them to be called, but what essentially is is data will be what is passed into resolve, and error is what is passed into reject. And then in here, let me just log the data. And you can see we get in here the promise was successful because it is this data in here. And then within here, let's log the error. And that'll only work if we comment out this and uncomment this. And now we get logged. There is an error and catch. But anyway, let's see what happens now if we return versus throw an error in each of these situations. So inside here, let me resolve again. And inside here, after we log the data, Let's throw an error, so throw new error. This was an error like this. We can see that when we threw an error, it will go down the promise chain until, once again, it finds the nearest catch statement, which of course is this one right here. So it is just logging out this error saying there was an error. So the error is handled, the error that we throw is handled in this catch statement. To make more sense, let's just type in cheese so you can see it's calling this catch statement here. So save that. 
But now, once again, let's see what happens if we switch throw with return. You can see that we don't call this catch statement. So the error has not been logged anywhere. And this is because we are returning the error. And because we are returning something, the promise is essentially still successful. So what we would have to do is we would call another then, get the data, and then log it out like this. And now you can see we get the error logged out saying this was an error because this is what's being called because returning is essentially saying it's successful. On the other hand, if we were throwing the error, it would be calling this catch statement here. So essentially because we were returning something, even though it's an error like this, the promise is still seen as successful. So it calls the dot then. But so the main reason I made this video is just to demonstrate that these two are not the same. I've seen code where the programmer likes to return an error object, but personally I've never really been a fan of that. I would say that you should throw exceptions when it is outside of the normal logic of a program. Other than that, you could just return some value like null or undefined, undefined and proceed from there. For example, if you had a login form and a user clicked submit without filling in the information, I would not throw an error here or return an error. Instead, I would just handle it as, a, as an expected case. So basically, I save um, throwing exceptions for when it is outside the normal logic of a program, or essentially unexpected. But so this is my video on that on um, throwing versus returning errors in JavaScript. If you have any questions, as always, let me know in the comments. I'll try and get back to you. But besides that, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.